I want to share some stuff with you. Y'all gonna let me speak into your heart? Yeah, will, y'all, will y'all let me do that? Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Listen. Listen, you can't wait for me to be good because I'm not good enough to get into your mind and into your heart. You, you determine who loves you. You determine that. You determine if you're going to want to embrace relationship. You determine if God's going to move in your life. You determine that. Now, God's always there. In fact, the Bible says that God stands at the door and He knocks. So you may not be hearing it, but it's like... Probably not good for the speakers. But that's what's been happening. You may not have heard it, but I want you to know that right now, I'm trying to tune your ears into the fact that God is there going, Hey! But ultimately, that'll be, that'll be something that not I do, because, because I want God to and come in. I'm like, open door, the light is left on, la quinta. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on in. You know what I'm saying? But, but you, you, you that's, that's on you. And so I'm going to pray, but ultimately, shh, it's up to you. Now, as I pray, you have to determine, do you want to go somewhere in your faith? Do you want to go somewhere? Do you want to battle something? Do you want to change? Do you want to grow? Do you want to see God move and transform your life? Because if you don't, then this will be 30 minutes of boringness to you. And all I can tell you is like, the song is open up, the words will be awesome. But for everybody else, I believe that God can do something crazy awesome in your life. Because I've seen it time and time again. Does that make sense? And God has no respect for person. He's going to show up and do something radical in your life tonight if you're ready. Let's pray. Dear me, Father, Lord, right now we come before you. We just ask for the anointing to move in this place. God, you say things in people's mind, in their ears, in their heart that I can't say. Orchestrate a sentence that would change their life. Orchestrate a moment that they would go back to now for the rest of their life. That would be the catalyst to who they marry, what they do, how they perform life, what decisions they make. Father, I pray right now that you would direct someone by the Holy Spirit and it would totally change their life. We did not come to be entertained. We came to move. We came to honor you. We came to serve you. Come on, saints. God, we came to move in this place. We came to go somewhere. We came not to be average, but to influence our schools, our cities, our church. Father, we pray that the voice of the fool would not be louder than the voice of the saint. In Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel 17. I'm going to talk to you about a story that is like epic upon. Uh, uh, just, just, you've heard about it. You have, you have, you have been involved in this story if you were in church at any time you in 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 kids church you have heard about david and goliath you've heard about this you there's been movies made about it facing the giants there's been anecdotes poems people things i mean even sportscasters talk about you know this is a classic version of david versus goliath and, and then they'll they'll make um, they'll make a comment about this story. So we all know this story, but I want to talk a little bit if I can because I believe that God is about to move a gathering of young people who are committed and believe that they are the one to do something and change something. Never before in our culture, listen, never before in our culture has insecurity been so high. Never before in our culture has offense been so high. Never before in our culture has marriages been in, in, in the turmoil that they're in. Never before. Then why am I talking to you about this? Because you are, you have received that. You have benefited. You have been involved in that. You have been victim to that. And so whenever something happens in a culture, they have two ways to respond. They break free or they become a slave. That's what happens. They either break free or they become a slave. And so in your position, um, we could talk about the economy. We could talk about morality. We could talk about anything in your culture. You can't 
turn on MTV or watch a, 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 a YouTube about some secular artist without, you know, it being so sexual. <laughs> uh, it's just like, oh, oh my God. It's just like burns your, your eyes. It's just like. It's like everything is sexual. It's crazy. It's like I'm talking about Mountain Dew. And you're like. It, it, it is crazy. This culture. And you know what? This ain't weird because back in Rome, they did the same. People were having orgies like out in public. It was crazy. People were walking by and they would have sex in public and we're going there and nobody nobody yell i'm serious and so what i'm telling you is man we what happens is it's like the frog in the water that gets turned up and it gets hot 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 and after a while the frog gets used to it what i'm telling you is you have been born into compromise and you don't even see what this culture is like and what i want to do is right now i want to pull back your eyes and I want you to see, man, we need some people to, ch to change this stuff. We need some people to, to change it and not to just be, stop, that's wrong. You're going to hell. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about revival. I'm talking about someone who doesn't get mad at the homosexual, but someone who says, I love you so much, I want to free you from sin. Does that make sense? And the church has missed it because we would rather pick up a picket sign and go, heck no, you're going to hell. Heck no, you're going to hell. Burn, burn, burn. And so now everybody's a sinner and everybody's going to hell. And even though that is true, the message of the gospel is not condemnation. It's liberation. The message of the gospel is not you dirty little girl. I mean, did Jesus not have an opportunity to do that when the girl who was caught with the other dude and all the religious people were there and they were like, this girl's caught in the very act, caught up in that. Don't make me do a word picture. Caught in the act. Y'all don't need a drama on that, okay? Caught in the act. And Jesus did not go to her. You dirty little hoe. What is wrong with you? What are you? You. Dad, you know your mama taught you better than that. What does the commandment say? Do not commit adultery. What is wrong with you? I don't told, told you better. Don't make me come back over here. I am tired of walking in some dirty little sleaze bag girl. What is wrong with you? Does this make sense? But that's how we feel in this culture. Is that you? Know, Hey man, you want to come to church with me? No. Come on, you can get your life changed because you know you need to. You know, it's like, uh, where, where, we got to have people who are the one. We got to have people that will stand up. We got to have the people that are not going to respond religiously, but will respond out of love and say, you know what? Hey! I know what everybody religiously says, but what I'm telling you is, hey, don't throw a rock at this girl. Because God loves her. And here's what I'm telling you. Don't sin. I'm not giving you a free ride to sin. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is God will always provide love before judgment. Love before judgment. That's why you haven't been judged right now. He's loving you. You, there will be a time, no make no mistake, if you will sit before the white throne and everybody will be there and you will be judged. Everything that you said, everything that you did, every thought you had, everything will play before you. And you'll sit there going, dang. You will be judged. But God is love before judgment. Love. Here's what I want to talk to you a little bit about what our response 
in the Christian culture? What our response in the church? What believers should be doing today, tomorrow? Because the fact of the matter is there's a lot of giants out there. There's the giants of tolerance, and you can't say that, and you can't do that, and you can't think that way. Or, you know what, you're, you're not tolerant enough. And we have a giant of tolerance. We have, a, we have a giant that wants to make sin acceptable. And so where do you balance? Where do you balance? Do you become a Pharisee because you want to be righteous? Or do you just, you know, what it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you say, just I love you, it doesn't matter what you do. And so I don't know about you, but I've been thinking about these things. I've been thinking about because where is right? Where is right? Don't y'all want... Okay, never mind. Okay, I want to... I want to talk to you about the story where David has come up and he's on an errand with his father. And Goliath has been for 40 days taunting the armies of God, the army of God. Coming up, basically just punking them. Hey! And, and here's the funny part about this story. I'm going to give you a little background before we read it. But, but here is the, 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 the gist. There is this valley, right? And the Philistines are on this side, and the Israelites are on this side, and they're about to get it on. It's like an epic 300 battle, crazy, nasty. It's, going, it's, going, it's about to be on, okay? And they're getting ready to bum rush each other because only a few years later, Israel had whooped the Philistines, beat them like redhead circumstances. monkeys. I'm just talking about it. It was just terrible. It was the worst. It beat them. Now, here's the thing. They're both ready, and they're both ready to engage, and here comes the giant. Listen to this. Before they're about to blow, the trumpet's about to blow. Everybody's got their swords up. Ah! You know, boo, 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 boo. I mean, it's crazy. Epic. And this dude who is nine foot, nine inches, comes over the man. And he goes, hey! And just as Israel's getting ready to... Oh my God, what is that? Oh, he's blocking the sun. Is it a mountain or a man? Oh my, who birthed that? You know she's in pain. I'm just saying, some of you sitting over here, you know what I'm saying? Y'all were like, Bam! And your mom was like, oh, you don't even know the labor. You don't even know. A giant? Brr, I'm just saying. You don't even know. You know Goliath's mama was like, boy, you better not back talk me. Because everybody else was like three days in labor. But you, you were a month. I will beat you. This giant comes out, and instead of Israel bum rushing, listen, here's the thing. Is that in life, and guys especially, you know who you can whoop and you know who you can't whoop. And you look at all the time, and, and don't, girls, you don't even understand this, but, but guys, we're always looking around, we're like, mm -hmm, I can whoop you. I can whoop you. I can whoop you. Oh, no. <laughs> How you doing? You I was saving this for it's warm because I was thinking of you. What about that? Israel started listening, listen, not to the voice of God that said, go take this. But here's what they did. They reasoned. They reasoned. They reasoned. They let this giant flip the script on them. Instead of everybody being at war, here's what they said. Here's what he said. Hey, we don't need to fight today. Do you want to fight? Do you want to die? Do you want to die? Do you? I don't think you do. In fact, let's do this. Shoot. I'm going to fight for my squad. You fight for yours. And you get a man, and I'll be a man, and nobody has to die today. You just one on one. Imano, Imano. My sword, your sword. My spear, your spear. And whoever wins, that nation will be their strength. And so here's what the man. Somebody said, what if 
while he was doing his monologue, hey, why don't y'all, and everybody just said, bum rush him, and they were starting taking off pinkies and toes, and he was like, Ugh. I mean, just nine foot, just while he was doing his monologue, have you ever been watching a movie, and the bad guy's like, ha ha, you would have never, and don't you wish someone would just go, Poof, right then? You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't want to hear you talking. But here's what happened. The army of God, listen to this. Listen. The army of God started to reason with what the giant was saying. Instead of them being the people of God, they started listening to the wrong voice. And so they never fought. God had anointed the Israelites to win. But you can't win, listen to me, if you don't fight. You can't win over insecurity. If you don't fight, you can't win over depression. You can't win over, over pornography. You can't win over unforgiveness. You can't win if you don't engage. And if the enemy is sending you what you're going to think about, then you're never going to engage. You're always going to listen. Are you hearing me? And so David walks up. He dude's not even enlisted. He's not even a warrior. And has one of the biggest G moments in the world. You know, guys, you dream of this. When you walk up and say the cool line and all the girls are like, oh, and you're like, yeah. You dream of it. It's just, and I'm, so I'm going to read this to you as you, you see it. David just got there. It's the 40th day. Goliath gets up and starts talking his smack. And here's what David says in 1 Samuel 17, 26. David asked the men standing near him, 26. What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And uh, it's almost as if like, hey guys, what's up? Man? Uh, rah, rah. And I will bust you in your face. I ain't talking to me. <laughs> what, man? You ain't that big? I come over there right now. You better look at me holding my cheese. I ain't playing. Listen, here's the thing. David starts asking. This is a G. He doesn't go, man, I'm going to go whoop this dude. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go take care of him right now. Here's what he says. He says, what am I going to get when I kill him? What am I going to get? That's what he, he just, he, what will be done for the one who removed, what am, all right, I'm done. Hey, I'm going to go kill him, but what I get if I do? I'm going to go do yeah, what I get. And here is what they say. Man, your dad will be free from taxes. You'll be rich. You'll serve my Saul, and you'll get Saul's daughter. Huh. Tell her I'm coming. <laughs> what kind of guy walks up and goes, hey, hold up before I kill you. Hey, what am I going to get? That's like if you see a guy robbing a girl and the dude's got her. And before you jump in and help this girl, you're like, hey, you going to pay me? What am I going to get? How, why did he have that mentality? So here's what I thought. Here, I was trying to put this all together for us and, and, and what, what, that, what that would be like. Okay, so here is, here's Goliath. <laughs> Smash! <laughs> this, Goliath shows up. Dudes all swole up. 
looking like you got bee stings everywhere. And here is Israel. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. That's a team. Y'all don't know nothing about that. All right, now, here's, the, here's Israel. Here's Goliath. All right, now here's, here's G.I. Joe. What's the G.I. Joe's? Nah. G.I. Joe, y'all know the song? Okay, Duke. You want me to sing Duke? Yo, Joe, there you go. All right, so here you go. Hold Goliath. Just get over here. Hold him. All right? And just give me a raw right there. Squeeze the legs. All right, good. Now, here's Israel. And Israel's like, oh, man, I got to get this sword out. What's up? Israel. Yeah. And they look at him. Oh, scary. And, and, and it's like, ain't no way I can go against Goliath. He's so big. Look at me. Oh, no, just don't hurt me. Just stop. Just in game. Look. I'm like his man child. This is small. I'm like. Uh, okay, so here's Israel. Could you hold Israel? All right, scoot back because they want to see. And here's David. <laughs> David is just a little punk. You're just like, oh, David, you can't even play. You know, it's like, when you're picking a team, have y'all seen that commercial, that, that, that uh, phone commercial where like they're picking the basketball people and it's like all the losers are picked on one team? And so David walks up and it's like, hey, man, what's going on? And he goes, rah. And David looks at this dude, and they don't want to fight. He's like, man, I'm the snot out of you. I ain't playing. Now, here's what I want you to see is this. No one thought David could do anything. When you look, how in the world can we change culture? Because even though I hear preaching about how awesome a God can be for me, listen to me, I feel like this. When people say change the world, I don't even relate to that because honestly, I can't even stay saved. When people say you've got a purpose and you've got a destiny, I want to say, yeah, but you don't know my addiction. When they say to me, you're going to do something great for God. There's an anointing on your life. You're like, mm -hmm. if everything turns out perfect, maybe. But honestly, I see myself like that. And you know why? We're not doing anything in our, Christ in our schools. Because we're this. And the enemy's that. Here's what I'm telling you. This is who God picks to be the one to do something exceptional. God doesn't pick this guy. God picks someone that their heart will be totally sold out because you know what? In my flesh, I can't do anything. But through you, I know I can do something great, something awesome. I'll walk into that ministry. I'll walk into that anointing. I will overcome. I won't do divorce like my parents and my grandparents. I'm going to change everything in my life. But here's the thing. How many of you, if we were honest, this is you. And worst of all is this, look at me, is that we know we shouldn't judge people, but how many of you look at your family, look at people in your life, and you see them as this? You see them, that God will never, they'll never turn, they'll never change, God will never do. Why did David, why was David the only one to run up to this giant? 
and say, I'll fight when no other man would fight. Nobody else would fight. Nobody else would get into it. Nobody else would do it. I'm going to tell you why. Are you all hearing me? You listening? You with me? David had a God moment that changed everything. David had a God moment. Listen to me. David had a God moment that changed everything. And God, David let God penetrate his life. And David knew he was different. Here's what happened. David. Insignificant little Lego man David. He was out with the sheep taking care of the family business. And a prophet comes up to his house and he looks at Eliab and goes, Surely, man, look at the nose. Oh, man, you're not even flexing, okay? Surely it's it's Eliab. Surely it's, it's, surely it's. And they went through each brother, but guess what? They went in there. And so, the prophet Samuel said, Jesse, man, you got any more sons? This is awkward. God told me to come and I want one of your sons. I've gone through all your sons. And Jesse says, man, I got one more, but who's this? I got one more, but <laughs> you don't, you don't do anything great with somebody like this. You don't, the only thing you do with this is you give them a little responsibility. But, but someone like this, you don't. Here's what the prophet said. Go get him. And we won't sit down until he comes. And David walked in. And Samuel looked at him. And God said, anoint this one. You know why? Because I'm not anointing on his height. I'm not anointing on his ability. I'm not anointing on his talent. I am anointing. Listen! because of his heart his heart God always cares about heart and what I'm asking you is where is your heart what is your heart hard is it cold is it rebellious granted you had some hard knocks maybe you don't know your dad you don't have a relationship with your mom your finances aren't where they need to be you hadn't been you maybe your older brother or older sister is always in the limelight you're always in the shadow i don't know what it is but i get it but god does not promote attendance god promotes heart and it just so happens that david And so here's what happened. The oil of anointing from this prophet came on David. Whoosh. And David had a God encounter. And the Bible says, listen, that the Holy Spirit fell on David. Listen. Listen to this. And here's what happened. As David's talking smack around all the other uh, warriors. Man, I'll go kill that dude. Eliab walks up and says, man, shut your mouth. Why are you always talking to me? You always think you can do something. And David's like, what did I do? Then David goes before the king. King Saul says, man, you cannot go fight this Goliath. You're a youth and he's been fighting since his youth. Man, you can't go up against him. And here's what David says. King, my king. And this dude ain't nobody different than what I've done back home. Because back home, let me tell you what happened. A lion came up on my dad's sheep and it wanted to kill my flock. And I ran after it and I killed it. <laughs> I mean, just how can you just think about this for a second? Who, what teenage guy, girls, do you know runs up on a lion? Does that make sense? Ain't no teenage guy in here going to see a lion that's not in a cage. Mufasa is running at you and you're like, here kitty kitty. <laughs> Dude, if a lion runs after me, I'm going to tell you, and we're together. If a lion runs after us and we are running, I'm tripping you, saving me, asking forgiveness later. I will take communion. I will do it all. Jim, 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 Jim. Forgiven. 
Then, and he says he killed it. I mean, kill a lie by yourself. <laughs> then, listen. After that, he says a bear came up. This ain't Yogi or Boo Boo. A, a, listen to me, a bear, a bear, a bear. I'm, I mean, if a bear comes running after me and I'm taking care of sheep, I'm like appetizer, appetizer, appetizer. By the time he gets to me, he's full. I'm just telling you. But I don't run after the bear and kill it. Rah! Hold on. Man, what How did David do that? What, why was David so different? Because here's the thing. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. David had a God moment. And he knew that that God moment, listen, changed everything in his life. And so when the lion came up to steal and kill from him, David said this, if I am anointed, I can beat this. And so while everybody else was scared of the lion, David ran to it. Can you imagine what happened when the lion came and struck David and David ran and they met and David went, like, you got him! And then like, ah! What do you do when you kill a lion? Like, There's like theme music. And you just walk in. Walking in, out in the school. And they're like, all the time, done. There is theme music playing in your head. You're like, I am bad. People are like, man, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, you know what? I took care of my dad's goats. You know what'd you do? I fed the camel. What'd you do? Killed a lion. A bear? And so guess what? When the lion died, what do you think happened in here? I'm a, I'm a beast! I am, a, I am just blown up! I just, I just, uh, bear! Oh, okay. And then he kills the bear. And what do you think happened? And so listen to me, listen. When he came face to face with the giant, he already had victories, but no other man did. And so he could say to the king, King, don't worry about the giant. On this wall, I got a lion. On this wall, I got a bear. And I've been waiting for that wall. See, on this wall, I got Mufasa, I got Yogi, and I'm going to get you. But listen, listen to my hand. The thing is this, if you don't kill your lions, listen to me, and you don't kill your bears, you never get your Goliaths. And we are in a culture of Goliaths. And oh my gosh, the world, the culture that's so evil, it's demonic, the dark is getting darker. I don't even want to have kids in this world because ah, they might experience. Ah. But if you're like, I've killed my lion and I've killed my bear. And you don't know what I've had to overcome to even be at church here tonight. And I am so proud. Listen to me. I am so proud of you that you are here. Because even if your mom made you come, you are here. You are in the house of God. And I am so proud of you because you could be at home. You could be watching reruns. You could be watching whatever. But you're here in the house of God. And what I'm telling you is, God does great things. If you're not scared. You scared? Giant comes. <gasps> Someone at school. You go into the little meeting. Little meeting at, at 7.30. See you at the pole. Whatever. And so, to do see you at the pole, you kind of... 
This is the record. Okay, just turn back. Turn back. Okay, cool. Let's play really quick, guys. Squeeze, squeeze him. Good. We're done. Donut. No, 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 no. Woo! Who has the heart? Bam, come on up. Who has the heart? Who has the heart? Who has the heart? I'm not talking to everybody today. Listen to me. I'm talking to the ones that are sick and tired of the enemy stealing from your life. You can blame it on your parents like everybody else does in the world. Well, my life would be better if my parents stopped fighting. Well, my life would be better if, look at me. Just like the children of Israel, we could go beat the Philistines. We have before, but you know what? There's a giant. What is, listen to me, the giant that is keeping you, listen, from getting the victory? What is the giant? And I'm not talking to those who are deep in sin. I mean, I may be talking to you. Get right. Change your life. Allow Jesus to come in. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And watch what happens in your life. In a year, you'll be different. And I'm also talking to the church kids. But you know what? Fear. Intimidation. Whatever adversity that relationship that broke your heart and now you're not going to trust anybody or that dad issue that happened whatever it is what i'm telling you is that enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and if you don't kill your lion if you don't kill your bear if you don't kill your giants then what i'm telling you is without the lion and without the bear david would have been listen to me potential david would have been potential is that you? Just potential. Potential. You could be. You could be. You could be. Potential. You know, I'm too scared. I can't. Potential. I'm looking for people to say this. I will humble my heart. Let God heal me and have a God moment so that I am not scared when the lion comes. And look at me, the lion is coming. For some of you, it's already come. The lion is coming. You don't get to pick and choose if he comes. He's coming. For me, it was adopted from a foster home. For me, it was learning disabilities. For me, it was asthma. For me, it, it was the parents who adopted me got divorced. For me, it was uh, my principal walking in when I should have been in the sixth grade and them telling me you have to go back to the fourth grade. For me, I had different lions. What are your lions? What are your bears? What's keeping you from walking in victory that God has for you? I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm not really talking to anybody. You guys don't have any problem with this. Or maybe you need to be set free so that you can do the things that God has called you. We are waiting on the one. And I believe it's you. I believe it's you. Well, Stephen, God will use someone else. Not in Esther's case. Mordecai told Esther, if you don't do this, if you don't go ahead and tell the king what's going on, you and all of these people will die. When the children of Israel wanted to take Canaan, some spies came back and said, Moses, we can't take the land. And for 40 years, no one moved. And everybody of that culture died because no one was brave enough to take a giant. I don't believe that your generation move out of the way. 
I believe your generation to pave the way. I believe that you're somebody. I believe that God has an anointing on your generation. Or you know what? Don't. Maybe it'll be your kids. Is anybody hearing me? I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to tell you that God has so many great things. Come on, can we sing this? Y'all stand up, put that words up on there.